Hello from TUS. Welcome for our biology class, the 12th lesson under transport in plants and animals. Uh, today we are still going on with the blood vessels. And remember we talked about the components of circulatory system. We said the circulatory system is made up of the pumping mechanism, which is the heart. Then we have the blood vessels. And then we have the blood, the transporting fluid. So today, let us continue with our blood vessels. We have said that we have three blood vessels. We have arteries, capillaries, and veins. So the objective of our learning lesson today is to ensure that you are able to describe the capillaries and also we do part of the veins. That is the objective of our lesson today. So without wasting time, let us move on. Now, I want to take you back to what we did last time. We said that uh, last time we said that uh, the arteries branch. The arteries, they come, arteries come from the heart. And arteries carry uh, oxygenated blood. Then arteries branch into arterioles. So these are arterial. Arterioles into capillaries. So the whole of this is capillaries. Capillaries into venules. These are venules. These are venules. Venues, venules join to form veins. That is something that you need to know as we move on. Moving ahead to our lesson today, which is the capillaries. Capillaries are normally very numerous in number. Their number is large. And the capillaries are close to the body tissues. They are the ones that run into the body tissues. Exchange of substances, exchange of substances, or between the tissues and the blood takes place across the wall of the capillaries. This one shows that the walls of the capillaries are permeable. They can allow substances to pass across. Inside the blood, why does the blood move to the body? The blood moves to the body tissues because the body requires oxygen. The body tissues requires nutrients like glucose, amino acids, mineral salts, fat acids and glycerol. All these things are required by the cells. We have seen that earlier. But at the same time, as the processes that occur within the cell produces waste products, like I said, respiration which occurs in the mitochondria produces carbon four oxide, which must be transported to the lungs. Now you can see the connection. Various processes like the one that occur in the liver produces urea, uric acid. All those things must be transported to the excretory sites. So exchange takes place across the capillary walls. So this is how the capillary looks like. And the capillary is one cell thick. The thickness of the wall is just one cell, the thickness of one cell. And you can see it has pores. So it is permeable, but made up for a layer of one cell thick. That is how the capillary looks like. Thin walls, very important, and numerous in number. So again, we move on. So if you look at the capillaries, this diagram shows an open capillary, slashed, cut longitudinally, a section. 
And this is how substances move out and into, across the wall. This is the wall, across the wall, the movement of substances. Very thin walls made up of sacks. That one just shows. Now, adaptations of the capillaries. One, they have walls which are one cell thick for rapid movement of substances, for rapid diffusion of substances. Two, they have permeable walls to allow the passage of molecules or particles. At the same time, they have narrow lumen to increase the, press, uh, the pressure of the blood flowing through them. So they have narrow lumen as permeable walls to allow the passage of substances and they have thin endothelium. Their walls are very thin for rapid diffusion. Permeable walls to allow the passage of water molecules and particles of substances. Then narrow lumen Lumen is that space, the whole part, to, uh, in uh, what, to maintain or to sustain the high pressure of the blood. And then again, capillaries are numerous in number. There are so many in number. This one has a significance. Why? That large number ensures that there is large surface area for exchange of substances. So the capillaries blood branches into arterioles. And the, sorry, the arteries branches into arterioles and arterioles into capillaries to increase the surface area. And then the fluid part of the blood is normally forced out of the capillary. If we can look at this diagram here, there's this diagram. In this diagram, the Capillaries come in, this is the arteries branch into arterioles. Arterioles into capillaries. These are capillaries, these red ones. And then capillaries come together to form venules. Venules join to form like that. So, like, let us look it from this side. From this side, this is the blood from the body. Branching. Now when blood reaches here, these are tissues. The body tissues are made up of cells. The cells are surrounded by a fluid that we call tissue fluid. It is substances move from the blood into the tissue fluid and then into the cells. That tissue fluid is what we call is what enters into the lymphatic system. So there's another transport system called lymphatic system. But what happens here as the blood moves? Now the blood has got plasma, blood plasma, which is the liquid part of the blood. What is there in the blood plasma? We have mineral ions. We have glucose. We have water, we have amino acids, we have dissolved, uh, we have amino acids. All these things are found in the plasma. And these things have small particle size. When they reach the capillary part of the blood vessels, what happens? These substances, water plus everything that is dissolved is pushed out and pushed out where? They are pushed out into these intercellular spaces where we have the tissue fluid. They form the excess fluid from the blood drains into a system that we call lymphatic system. The process that takes place here shows that the blood capillaries act as a sieve. When the blood comes, anything with small, with the lights, the blood capillary, if this is the capillary, the capillary acts as a sieve. Let's say this is the capillary. 
this is the capillary. So, if this is the capillary, and the holes, tiny holes, pores, it is permeable. When the blood comes under high pressure, containing glucose, so we have glucose, there is water, there is amino acids, we have uh, mineral ions. All those things are forced out of the blood and they move out. They are what form the tissue fluid. And then the excess tissue fluid drains into, an, into the lymphatic system. So the process that takes place here is a filtration process, what we call ultra filtration. Ultra filtration. Let us stop there and reconnect in the second segment.